So do you know how most people think that going to the military, serving the military, they're either going to be in a war, they are going to be boots on the ground, they're going to have a rifle in their hand, or they're going to be supporting somebody in that capacity? Well, what if I told you that going to the military also prepares somebody to be a multi-millionaire? What? Yes. Well, I'll explain in this video of the Seven Figure Squad five reasons why the Marine Corps and how the Marine Corps taught me how to become a multimillionaire in this episode, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? My name is smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And, uh... First, before I even begin, happy Veterans Day to all of our armed service members in uniform, out of uniform. Happy Veterans Day to you. Thank you for your service, and thank you for being part of a very, very small fraternity in the world that is called the United States Armed Forces. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please like this page. Please like our channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel because our goal is to get to 150,000 subs. So therefore we can award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 to help them in their cause. All right, so let's get right into it. Here are five lessons I learned from the Marines that helped me become a millionaire. Number one, this is pretty interesting. I learned in the military right away, I can work for nothing. That's correct. After eight years serving in the military, I was a sergeant. I got out and I looked back at my military paycheck. I was getting paid a little under $25,000. If I lived on base, I'd be getting paid less than $20,000 a year. And uh, I realized that, man, you know what? I can work for nothing. That I was working for the pure pride and enjoyment of being in the military, serving our country, being in uniform. Our vision was on the mission. Our purpose would go to a deployment and come back safe. But we felt a huge amount of delayed gratification. So these are all elements, making sure that we appreciate the smaller things. These are all elements of what it takes to become an entrepreneur, what it takes to save money, invest money, tuck that money, put it away, allow this thing to grow, still works to put your blood, sweat, and tears to something, knowing that I'm building something great, that I'm building something special, that if I believed in the vision and the mission and the purpose of why I was there, I was proud to wear the uniform of the United States Marine. I was proud to wear the uniform as an entrepreneur. I was proud to wear the uniform of my brand, my company, the, 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 the crusade of what our company stood for. And uh, when we're putting together the, the vision and the mission of our company, it wasn't necessarily just bottom line uh, dollars and cents. Of course, that's important, right? But when we're building a culture, when you're building an organization, we're building something that people want to be a part of, that's what I drew from the military. That's what I drew from sports, what I drew from my faith. I drew the best parts of the military and incorporated that into business. We challenge each other, we're always pushing each other's limits, we're always pushing the envelope, we're making sure they have the best product out there, we're pride, we took pride in what we did and what we stood for. That's what it takes to build a business and that's what it takes to build your dreams to become a million dollar reality. So lesson number one, I learned to work for nothing. Number two, I learned to find work. What am I talking about? You know, one of the things that is a pet peeve for me when I, when I see people just standing around, sitting around, kicking back, we always had to say in the military, look for work, take initiative. I'd rather you take initiative than not take initiative. I'd rather you take initiative and do something and find out that it was a wrong thing to do than for you to, to not take initiative. Next thing, the whole mission and the whole, you know, world passed you by. And they taught me that very early on as a 17 and 18 year old in a fleet Marine force, I learned to receive information and immediately pass it on, receive information and immediately incorporate it. You know, I didn't sit on Intel. I make sure I passed on Intel. I make sure I passed on best practices. I make sure I passed on to make sure that my other fellow Marines have a better opportunity to succeed. Oh, here's another one. Stay inspection ready. What am I talking about? Uh, listen, don't worry about getting ready because if you're already ready, you're ready to go. So don't be in a position where you're theoretically got your pants around your ankles. You're ready to rock and roll. Uh, one of the Marine Corps leadership principles is to be technically and tactically proficient. Back to taking initiative, looking for work. I never wanted to have somebody else outsmart me, outflank me, outhustle me to something that I should already know. So that principle right there, that lesson there prepared me to go in business for myself to make sure all my ducks were in a line to figure out what the ducks were to begin with 
and make sure that at any point in time, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take a client. I'm ready to hire new staff. I'm ready to open up and expand a new department. I am ready to go. Why? Because I'm a force in readiness. I'm taking initiative. I'm looking for it. I'm ready to rock. Which leads me to number three. We did more with less. Marines, we are the department of the Navy. The United States Army has their budget. I says Air Force has even a nicer budget. And I says Navy has a budget. The Coast Guard has a budget. The Marine Corps, we're part of the Navy. We're part of the naval budget. Uh, we always had hand-me-downs. I remember uh, our weapons, our rifles, our gear. Uh, very rarely do we have anything brand new. Of course, you know, your uniforms and, and, and boots are all brand new, but in terms of uh, uh, equipment, no, it seems that we always were dealing with a secondhand type of stuff. And so when we are thinking about the context of being an entrepreneur, Marines, the lessons learned that we learn to do more with less. And guess what entrepreneurs have to do? They got to make that dollar stretch. They got to make sure that uh, they do more with less. They got to make sure that uh, the, the one, two, three clients that they have turns into six, nine, 10, 20, 30 clients. They're money makers and they're paying their bills are involved in multiple things to grow and expand their business. They know how to have multiple conversations. Why? Because the only thing that they have is the gift of gab, the opportunity to sell their brand, their story, the opportunity to, to show why people should be doing business with them versus somebody else. That's being scrappy. That's getting things done. And military veterans already know how to do that. That's a lesson I took from the Marine Corps. You were resourceful that way. And that's what entrepreneurs are. They are very resourceful with the things that they have. Otherwise, if they don't make the most with the least, they are out of business. Which leads me to point number four. We don't want to be out of business as an entrepreneur. Well, guess what? Military veterans learned how to do. Guess what the Marine Corps taught me? Taught me how to handle stress. All the way from the yellow footprints in boot camp in San Diego to the drill instructors getting in your face, to having multiple drill instructors getting in your face, to not having any sleep, to not having enough food. You learned how to handle stress. You learned how to be in uncomfortable positions for extended periods of time. Military service members learned how to deal with multiple areas that needed your exact attention. And you learn how to prioritize. You learn how to prioritize very quickly. It's not that uh, somebody actually told you how to prioritize. You just used common sense. Otherwise, it costs you not only your life, but also costs you your buddy's life. So dealing with stress is what many military service members know how to do. It's an automatic thing. Going into entrepreneurship, going to business for yourself, this is easy peasy. You're not dealing with bombs and bullets and bad guys. You're dealing with competitors in the marketplace. You're dealing with the people down the street. You're dealing with a, a banker or a collector. Your distress is nothing compared to what you and I went through in the military. So listen, stuff in business, this is easy. You already know how to handle stress. Part of this too as well, with especially what's going on in the marketplace today is that you have to learn how to deal with multiple personalities. People that were from different parts of the country, there were different upbringings, that had different color skin. I remember uh, Lance Corporal Roy. Roy, if you're watching this, you remember what you told me in boot camp? You looked straight in my eyes, right in Cooper's eyes, who's from Dallas, Texas, by the way. You looked right into our eyes, and Lance Corporal Roy said this. This is the first time in my entire life I've met somebody in my life that's not white. Wow, wow. We learn how to get along, we learn how to get the job done, and it doesn't matter if your skin is white, black, brown, yellow, purple, red, doesn't matter. We had one color in the military, you know what that color was? Green. Whether you're light green or dark green, we learn how to get along and get the job done. And I think you as an entrepreneur coming out of the military, being a military veteran, you learn how to get along with different people. You learn how to galvanize relationships. You learn how to teach people how to get along. And imagine when there's a strong, entrepreneur community led by veterans. Check that out. And they know how to galvanize people and get people to start working together. A strong veteran military community in the business world leads for a strong America. So when you are able to take those same lessons that you learned in the military and translate that into business and people around you are getting paid, people around you are getting their, 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 their kids through school and food on the table and everybody's happy, Man, you are a hero coming from the military community now into the entrepreneurial and business community. That's a lesson I personally learned in how to become a millionaire by learning how to get along with people in stressful situations. And last lesson, number five, learn how to stick out. 
Yeah, you got to learn how to stick out. If you want to be recognized for medals on your chest, you want to be recognized for things to further uh, 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 make your unit stick out and make sure you get awarded and making sure that you come back home safe, you learn how to stick out. You learn how to speak up. You learn how to compete. You learn how to make sure that uh, if push came to shove, that they are picking your name above everybody else's. Why? Because you want the promotion. You want the pay raise. You want the extra 30 bucks a month, okay? So you learn how to stick out. You didn't wait for time and service to promote you. You said, man, I'm going to go out and get it. I volunteered. You see, that's what entrepreneurs do. I stuck out differently. I think I was the youngest corporal promoter on the military base. I was like 19 years old when I got promoted to corporal. Back then, it took like four years, five years for anybody to get promoted to corporal. I got promoted to corporal in 19 months. I got married to us and promoted to sergeant. So my two ranks of non-commissioned officer I got promoted to meritoriously. So those are big lessons I learned that I didn't realize was wiring me to become an entrepreneur one day, that was wiring me to be a multimillionaire one day, that when I saw something and I had a vision for it, I had a knack for saying, it's just not a matter of what I'm gonna get, it's when I'm going to get it. The journey of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is for you because guess what happens with money? Money just makes you more of what you are. Money just allows you to manifest your vision, allows you to manifest your thoughts, manifest your projects into a reality. And there's so much talent that I see a lot of our fellow service members have. There's so much unexpressed emotion that can help in a very positive direction that goes unnoticed, that goes, that basically nobody knows about. That the business world right now is salivating to have more military service members become entrepreneurs, become multimillionaires, create jobs, be creators, and, and, and I'll leave it with this, this one final thought, and it's the thought of PTSD. You know, I, uh, I came back from the military with PTSD. I remember going through the counseling classes, and I remember this pink certificate they gave me from the, uh, from the military base. I went through these core counseling classes. I showed it to my wife, and she goes, oh, babe, I'm glad you went through it. And I actually took that, and I shredded it because I, I wanted to make that a permanent part of my past. But I realized that as an entrepreneur, my best way for dealing with PTSD was not necessarily associating with other service members. Now, guys, this is my personal opinion, was not associating with service members to talk about shit that we went through. It wasn't that. That was, sure, they may have helped for maybe one or two or three or four times we got together. But what really helped me was when I left those classes, when I left those community meetings, and I'd go into business for myself, and I was much more fired up and excited about where I'm going in business by no longer being broke. So when you're looking at PTSD, the more I looked at succeeding in my business plan, focus on having to get better because your business will not improve, your finances will not improve unless you improve, unless you get better, unless you self-heal, unless you self-improve. It's not gonna get any better. Your financial situation is not gonna get better. No matter how much counseling you go through, you still gotta do the work. You still have to want and have that desire to get better. And once I put myself in a position of accountability, of, hey man, there's a carrot there I can chase after, that I can build a business that serves other people, that's very noble, man, I can grow. And this whole monster of PTSD just started getting smaller and smaller and smaller in my rear view mirror. And I learned that coming out of the military into the business world, that I have a choice between dealing with my former circumstances or dealing with my current and future circumstances I'm about to face. And that's much more exciting. That's much more eventful. That's much more healing. And that's much more profitable. And you can start learning to live the life that you really want to live. All the stuff that you said, man, if I get back to the United States of America, I do this. Well, great. How come you're not doing it? The majority out there. How come I'm not doing it? For a minority of you, you are doing it. But for majority of you, how come you're not doing it? I challenge you, go out and do it. I challenge you, suck it up, grin it and bear it. You know you gotta invest that money. You know you gotta put some, some work in. You know you gotta recruit and find the right people. You're doing it in the military. How come you don't do it for yourself? How come you bust your tail harder for Uncle Sam versus busting your tail for you that's in the mirror? And I want to encourage you and have you realign yourself back to Hey, you've done your time, you served our country, now let's make your name great. Let's make your name profound. Let's make your name stick out and mean something big. And my friends, my brothers and sisters in uniform, on this Veterans Day, 
I want to remind you that you are still called to serve, that you're still called to serve this country in a big way, that uh, even though you had an oath, that oath for many of us just wasn't something we forgot about. So before I let you go, I want you to check out a couple of videos here and how I took a $500 investment and turned it into building now a $65 million company. In this other video here, how millionaires use life insurance to build tax-free, tax-advantaged wealth. In light of what's going on with the taxes going on in our country, I think there might be some information you need to know because it's more than just what we knew, what you and I knew from Servicemen's Group Life Insurance. This is a whole nother ball of wax here. It's the reason why the rich get richer. And I know you, many of you deserve that opportunity too. So with that being said, please drop your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. Put it in the comment section below. You have to know that I look at that. I read that. I get back to you. Um, listen, man, if, if there's a fellow service member out there that needs another brother or sister to give you a call, drop your information below. We'd love to reach out and get in contact with you and let you know that you are not forgotten. Uh, let you know that uh, you're important. Let you know what... Uh, uh, what uh, resources are available to you in your local city and state. Don't be isolated on this day. Don't be isolated in your life, period. Be part of a community. You were built for being part of a community. Be plugged in to a community. Be part of the right community, that the community that lifts you up and wants you to become better. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm a money smart guy. Happy Veterans Day. Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.